Welcome to So Like a Pro Time. I'm Teresa Sigmund, and you are in the right place to learn to choose, alter, and make the dance sport, country, and skate dress of your dreams. Today, I have with me Lynn. I have a dress that she made. We are filming on location at You Can Dance Ballroom Studio in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, what's really fun about Lynn and I is that we have not seen each other in about 20 years, which was when I made her a ball gown and a Latin dress. That's right. <laughs> and it was just so much fun whenever, one, I saw you sign up on my email list because I keep track of all of you, <laughs> for real. And then the fact that we could connect as I was passing through St. Louis. So really, really fantastic. This is actually the first time that I have talked about a dress that was not professionally made or someone who was not in the sewing school. So I told Lynn and Betty, I said, you ladies have got <laughs> to get in the sewing school because <laughs> they're literally perfect, perfect candidates because they both know how to sew and have begun dabbling in this. And even if you had just knew how to sew, like with Betty, if she was making your hip hop stuff and wanted to get into ball gowns, the sewing school, my sewing school that I spent forever creating really does walk you through every step of the process. And it cuts down on all of this frustration because my guess is, because I remember those days and the So Like a Pro members tell me this, you feel like you're reinventing the wheel on every dress, don't you? Yes. Yeah. They make hair color to cover the grays. <laughs> <laughs> we know about that too. <laughs> yes. So ladies, if, or men for that matter, even though everyone in the school so far is women from seven countries, for those of you who are struggling with dresses like this and doing a pretty darn good job given the limited knowledge and resources that you have, if nothing else, get on my email list so that you get all these free tips. And for crying out loud, if you want to stop struggling with this and stop having to um, try to figure it out as you go, consider bec becoming a So Like a Pro member. You'll be glad you did, said all of my members from all these other <laughs> countries. Now, you made this dress, but I didn't know you knew how to sew. I have not sewn for that long. Certainly at the time that you made the dresses for me, I did not know how to sew. Okay. Um, I became interested in learning when, of course, you're always shopping for dresses and when you go to competitions, you're looking at all the beautiful gowns and also the prices of the gowns. <laughs> and um, I thought to myself, you know, if you desire to do something, why not apply yourself and try to learn? So, you know, kind of, self-taught mostly. Um, I have a friend, you know, Betty, who's kind of my mentor with different construction things, but um, just sort of plotted along and made a few different um, dresses and, you know, this one I made for Mary. Okay. So you all have quite the little team effort going on here. Betty, I if I remember correctly, makes or used to make mostly hip hop type outfits and then you all sort of coaxed her into making Latin dresses, ball gowns, which is a totally different ball of wax. So in a way, you're kind of like the blind leading the blind as far as, <laughs> the, as, far as you're figuring out as you go, right. which is super, exactly. super frustrating. Um, however, this turned out really pretty beautifully. You used a Vogue pattern for this, correct? I did. And I love the graphic black and white print on that with this black. It's got a weave on it. And the rhinestoning is simple but effective. The rhinestoning does not need to do a lot on this dress because of the pattern and because we've got texturing up here so on this halter top. So it really doesn't have to have a lot of stoning. It's got a crinoline hem. And you said there are trunks built into it, is that correct? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell from the trunks if, um, at least on this dress form, how well this dress fits. So, trying to make a ball gown or a latin dress out of a store-bought pattern is always problematic, as those of you who've tried it know. Same thing with skate dresses. But as far as a street dress goes, What's both good and bad about this dress is that there is a section right here 
that is um, is cut separately from both the halter top and the skirt. We have extra seaming here that we often don't have on a ball gown. If you were cutting this out of a non-stretch fabric, you would want to cut this on the bias so that it hugs better. This, this fabric does have a horizontal stretch though. It doesn't stretch two ways, but it does stretch. Okay, so, so Lynn says this fabric has a little bit of stretch going, and I can feel it here in the skirt, but what happened on the bodice of this is that there's no stretch going around. The stretch, as, it was, as you cut it, the stretch goes diagonally, which means that it doesn't necessarily mold a whole lot because the stretch is wasted, essentially, because it goes not where we need it to go. So it would have been, there would probably be a better fit if the stretch went this way, or if it was at the very least cut on the bias, which is what you would do if it was a non-stretch fabric. So the, the trunks are tacked in here, and so they probably once um, marry the person wearing it, the, one of the co-owners of the studio here, fills this out. It probably fits just fine. I love this classic neckline. Um, on the back, we have my microphone cord in the way, but ignore that. We've got nice mm -hmm. crisscross straps here, which I like a lot. You also said that you cut the back lower. Mm -hmm. That always causes more problems because typically store-bought patterns are higher, so cutting it lower is more difficult. So all in all, I think this turned out pretty well. So it's hard to tell if the bunching would minimize on the person in it. Logically, it would because it would kind of stretch everything out. So odds are good this is smoother. It does have um, an accent cut right here, which makes for a very pretty skirt attachment line, but it does make it more complicated sewing because then we have three seams that we're working with, three sections instead of just one dress. And you have made all sorts of accessories for this, so. I did. Um, Mary likes a variety of arm treatments. She loves arm treatments, so I tried to fulfill that wish and um, I made these um, for when she is doing smooth because she likes I love these. You know, the arm. They're similar but not exactly the same. Um, these are um, beads. Did you buy them already beaded or did you bead them? These were leaves that I cut apart and then I just, you know, sewed them on and then I and then I rhinestone these leaves to just, you know, freeform kind of thing. Yep. So that's for the smooth. And then um, and these are, of course, bracelets for, you know, that come down for on the forearm that go with those. Okay. So, and then she can also use this dress for standard. So I made her a little bit more elaborate um, treatments for those. If I can figure out how I did it now. Let's see here. And that's glitter chiffon? This is a glitter chiffon, and yes, um, this hangs from the wrist, and then the other one hangs from um, the armband. So, okay. so she, not, they're not attached to the dress, they're attached to the arm. Which is nice, because then it makes it easier to change all that. Right. Okay. Exactly. This would be the one for the left side. Oops. So there are two of those, and then um, the other thing was just some plain, you know, jet um, pieces that she can use, right. mix it up and See, now, it out. Now, what I think is particularly awesome about individual bracelets like this, let me hand you some of these back. One is that if she had a solid white dress, she could e you could easily, she could marry the, the woman this, for whom this dress was made, could wear these, she could wear these with even, you know, with a little evening gown if she wanted to. And then these things, I particularly love this this large petal here because it so nicely corresponds Mix. without mm -hmm. doing this was pretty easy to do because it was a pre-made beaded thing so it's nice mm -hmm. to be able to find something high impact that you can take and run with and make it look really good these can also be worn if she's just got a simple black dress she could throw these on with some ab earrings and have a really nice pop of contrast so separate things you get big value for your time and money on that mm -hmm. 
So anyway, Lynn, I think this is really very well done, given that, you, especially given that you're a new seamstress and this is maybe your, only your fourth or fifth dress. I think you were totally on the right ballpark. And yeah, I, I everybody starts somewhere. I started with stuff like this back in 88 and it was not easy. And I would sit there and scream and cry and pull my hair out and hate it. And so kudos to you and kudos to Betty, your, your cohort for really doing a great job on these. If you have found value in today's video, please share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. Go to sewlikeapro.com, leave me your name and email address so that I can always make sure you get my newsletter. And if you're interested in sewing school information to see if it's right for you, then by all means, check that option as well. Leave a comment about this dress. Tell me what you like best about it, but more importantly, share your struggles. Share your triumphs. Yes. What has, yeah, I mean, because one of the cool things about the whole Sew Like a Pro community, whether you're in the school or not, is that we are a community. And if we can help offer feedback to each other and be there supporting one another, it's really important for us to keep doing that. So leave a comment, folks. And that's it. I'm going to quit talking. I will talk to you again another day. Thank you, Lynn. This is like so much fun after 20 it's years. <laughs> and thanks again to Mary and Stan, the owners of You Can Dance Studio in St. Louis, Missouri. Talk to you again another time.